I will bless the Lord at all times and his praises shall continually be in my mouth. Good morning, brothers and sisters out there. I thank you for another opportunity to yet come before your presence to minister unto you. I know that it's a special privilege and I and I really am happy and grateful that you decide to join me this Sunday. Amen. Please join me in prayer. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this day that you have given us. Lord, we stand in all of all your wonderful gifts and the grace that you have placed in our lives. We know, Father God, it was you who kept us. It is you who watches over us. We know, Father God, it is you who made ways out of no ways. Lord, you have made the crooked path straight. And for that, Lord, we say thank you, Lord. And Lord, as we come together in the spirit, Father God, to worship you, to, to give you all the glory, the honor and the praise, and also, Father God, to hear word. We ask, Father God, that you begin to do surgery on our hearts. If you see anything, anything, Lord, that would, that's counter to your word, that's counter to the will of God in our hearts or inside of us, we ask, Lord, and we give you permission to remove it in the name of Jesus. Fill us, Father God, with a fresh anointing. Fill us with more of your spirit, Father God. Lord, we need to be refilled today. We need to be re-energized today. Lord, we need to be encouraged today. So, Lord, we commend this worship service to you, Father. We need you, Father God. We, our hearts and minds are on you, Father God. So, Lord, bless my brothers and sisters, Father God. Anoint me afresh that I may be able to minister unto them. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. At this time, First Lady is going to lead us in a worship song. Amen. I'm going to ask that you would join in with her. Wherever you are, just join in with her. Amen.
Amen, amen. Fill me up to our overflow. Is that should be our request every day for God to fill us up that we overflow. So our overflow will be able to overflow on others. That we'll be able to make an impact to wherever we may be. We need the Lord to fill us up and till we overflow. Amen. God bless you, First Lady. I appreciate you leading us in worship today. Amen. Our scripture reading will be coming from the New Testament. It will be coming from James chapter 1 and verses 21 through 25. James chapter 1 verses 21 through 25. And the word of the Lord reads, coming from that 21st verse, Therefore, put away all filthiness and rampant wickedness, and receive with meekness the implanted word, which is able to save your souls. But be doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word, and not a doer. He is like a man who looks intently at his natural face in a mirror. For he looks at himself and goes away and at once forget what he looked, what he was like. And verse 25, but the one who looks into the perfect law, the law of liberty, and perseveres, being no hearer who forgets, but a doer who acts. He will be blessed in his doing. Amen. Amen. Our sermon title today will be Practical Application. Practical Application. As a believer in Christ, I admit that I love the preaching and teaching of the word of God. I enjoy a good sermon. I admire how other pastors and preachers deliver the word. I love hearing the word of God as just as much as I love preaching and teaching the word of God. In my humble opinion, the word of God is awesome. But no matter how well the word of God is presented or who presents the gospel or the word of God, I should say, the word of God effectiveness is limited upon one deciding factor. And that factor is the person who receiving it, or in this case, the hearer of the word. You see, Hebrews chapter four, verse two says it like this. For indeed, the gospel was preached to us as well as to them. But the word which they heard Hear this, the word which they heard did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in those who heard it. One sure way that the word of God will become ineffective in our lives is when we just become just hearers of the word, but we don't have the word mixed with faith. Amen. Let me say it like this. I know most of us, if you've been in around the church scene for a while, you have heard the definition of faith as it explained in Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 1. Now is faith is now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. But I want to go on and tell you that faith is also that and also that the true evidence of faith is that faith causes you to move or to express your faith. In this particular scripture right here in Hebrews 4 and 2, the writer of Hebrews was, was letting the, the, the uh, Hebrews that was being persecuted, letting them know that the word of God comes and it came and everybody hears the word of God. Oh, in other words, in every setting, there will be those who will hear the word of God and there will be those who will receive the word of God and will act on it. In other words, they will mix the word of God with their faith, cause them to move, cause them to do something. And then there are those who will hear the word of God, but it doesn't profit them anything because they fail to act. In other words, they, they did not mix it with faith. Let me give you another example from the scripture. 
Luke 17, verse 11 through 14, I'm talking about the importance of mixing the, your, the word that you hear, this word that you're hearing even today, mixing it with faith to the point that your faith causes you to move. Let me give you a good example. Luke 17, verses 11 through 14, and it reads as follows. On the way to Jerusalem, he, he in this case is talking about our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, was passing along between Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered the village, he was met by 10 lepers who stood at a distance. Now, I'm going to put the backdrop of this because in today's society, we're not, we don't hear too much about the disease of leprosy because due to modern medicine, leprosy is pretty much almost eradicated. But in this time right here, leprosy was the dreaded big bad disease of its day. If you got leprosy, automatically that means you was ostracized. You, you couldn't even live among even your family members. You actually had to go to a leper, a leprosy colony, a leper colony, where there was a, a leper colony, colony was a place where all the lepers congregated. They stayed together because they was all in the same situation. They were ostracized. They were not allowed to be in the, in, in, be in the presence of the rest of society, the rest of the village. Now, if you can imagine being ostracized for an issue that you had no play in, you did not willfully contract this disease. And, and, and you know, today, sometimes people see that just because you're in, a, you, you're in a bad situation, that somehow or another that you chose that situation. That's not always the case. So these, these lepers, they, they, they heard about Jesus. They heard about how he delivered. They heard about how he performed miracles and how when he preached, he preached with such authority, not at the scribes and the Pharisees. He preached as if he knew what he was talking about. They heard that Jesus was passing by. They got the word. And when they got the word, they decided that they were going to meet Jesus. And it says who in, in that 12th verse, it says who stood at a distance. In other words, they stood at a distance because they knew that according to the law, they could not come close to people who were not, who were considered clean. In other words, didn't have leprosy. They had to stand at a distance. And they, and they said, and they lifted up their voices as verse 13 says, and saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, go Listen to that. Go and show yourself to the priests. And as they went, they were cleansed. In other words, here's a very important lesson. They heard the word of God. When they heard the word of God, they moved and acted on the word of God. Now, I want you to take, take for a moment. Look what it says. Jesus said, go. I believe when they first started stepping out towards to go show themselves as being cleansed, that they wasn't healed. But one thing they did as as they was continuing and obeying the word of God, which was what proceeded out of the mouth of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in this verse, they became healed. Here's the lesson that we need to hear today, that when you hear a dynamic word from the Lord and a word that meets you at your your need, a word that meets you at your situation, you have to not confer with the flesh. In other words, you cannot overthink it. You can't even check with your favorite person or your, your relatives or your prayer partner. You have, to, you have to start walking on that word. You have to do the word. And you're going to have things that are going to try to tell you, well, you're not healed yet. You, let's imagine probably by step three, they were walking there like, well, I know Jesus told us to go, but I still got these blotches on my skin. But as they began to operate in that word, which is a true de dem demonstration of faith, operating in the word is the, the, the ultimate demonstration of faith. They became clean. I believe that, that what the spirit wants us to understand this morning is that. It's just time out for just hearing the word of God and just letting that word of God just just stay at your seat or just we had a good time. Amen. Hallelujah. That preacher show preach. It was a good word. Amen. But did it have an impact on your life long enough to cause you to move? In other words, to apply the word to your life. 
Now, today I want to ask us a couple of questions. I believe the Spirit put this in my heart for us to ask ourselves because it's time for us to do some self-examination because far too many of God's children are hearing the Word of God. They hear the Word of God, but there's no practical application. In other words, there's no obedience, no follow through to the word of God. Here's the question number one. How do you view the word of God? Do you consider the word of God to be true? Do you consider it to be relevant to your situation? Do you consider the word of God to be necessary? And my second question, do you feel the word of God is optional? In other words, do I feel that God just going to bless me Anyway, and I'm, and I'm not required to obey or follow his word. Those are some questions that we have to answer and ask ourselves today. But let's return back to our foundational scripture for this morning. Coming out of the book of James, chapter 1, verse 21 and 25 through 25. And let me kind of walk down the lane of this, this word right here. And then after we walk down the lane of this word, I'm going to give you four quick points that you can take home with you. Amen. That you can apply. Amen. About why it's important for us to become not just hearers of the word of God, but hearers and doers of the word of God. James chapter one, verse 21 says it like this. Therefore, put away all filthiness and rampant wickedness. That's what it's saying. In other words, the filthiness and rampant wickedness that the word is talking about is talking about our own tendencies, our own predisposition, to our attitudes, the things that we think that is important. And let me say it like this right here. If you have a thought or you are, are predetermined or let's call it what it is, if you're prejudiced about an idea or even people and you cannot back your prejudice against the word of God, then you have to get rid of what I call, you got to get rid of that stinking thinking. In other words, when, when, when James is telling us to put it away, what he's really telling us, we need to make room in our lives for the word of God. Because if you have some thoughts or some belief that's opposite of the word of God, guess what? More than likely, you're going to follow your beliefs over the word of God. Your, your beliefs should always line up with the word of God. Hear what, hear what it's saying in the scripture. Put it away. All filthiness and rampant and wickedness. And listen to this. And receive the, with meekness the implanted word. The implanted word. In other words, every time you are, he, you are listening to a preacher or a teacher, that's what that person is doing. Is that person is acting as the sower, sowing this word, planting this word in your life. Even right now, what I'm trying to do by the power of the Holy Spirit and, and, and by the, the, the sanction of, the, of God, I'm trying to plant this word in your ears and hopefully it makes it in your heart that it will have an impact in your life. Remember, and all of the, the word doesn't become, doesn't impact your life until it causes you to move. Amen. Which is able to save your soul. So we'll see that, that James is saying this, the 21st verse, that we have to make room for the word. I'm reminded of Luke 2 and 7. If you go to Luke 2 and 7, you'll find that Mary had Jesus, the baby Jesus in the manger because it said there was no room in the inn. The end today that we're talking about is your heart. Does your heart have room for the word of God? Because a lot of times the reason why people don't become, they, get, they just hear us, they get stuck at stage one, which is hearing, and never make it to stage two, which is doing it because we don't have no room in our lives for the word of God. It's hard, hard for the word of God to have an effect on your life. This is what it means, I believe, over in Matthew 13, when it says that the word of God was choked out because that, the, the ground which represent the person hearing the word of God, the reason why the word gets choked out in our life because we don't have no room for it. We got to be careful to make sure that we have room for the word of God. We got to make room for the word of God because the word of God is able to save our souls. So we have to check our attitude. Do we receive the word of God with humbleness? When I mean by what the word is mean by with, with meekness or humbleness is that do you give the word of God a preeminence or first place in your life that when you hear the word of God, instead of you getting angry with the preacher because you felt like he stepped on your toes, but you're like, ouch, God. 
I see that your word is chastising me in the area. We talked about that last week, you know, about submitting to the chastisement of the Lord because God is dealing with us as sons and daughters of the Lord. And that's why it's so, in that's why it's so important that we have to receive the word with meekness. We have to, we have to say, okay, Lord, you, 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 you had that preacher to say this, and I know that it stepped on my foot. I didn't like it, but at the end of the day, I know that what I'm doing the light, your, your word has shined that light in that area, that dark area of my life, and I need, to, I need to be sensitive to it. I need to correct that. That's the purpose of the word. God is trying to get us clean. So we have to check our attitude when it comes to the word. We got to make sure we got to give the word that opportunity. We got to give it preeminence that we are going to receive the word, whether, whether it feels good to us or not. We're going to receive the word of God. And verse 22 says, but, but be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. In other words, there's, you know, just because you hear a word and you say, amen, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus, clap your hand, and you respond, doesn't mean that you're going to do it. It is so unfortunate that if you look over your life, if you look over the, the number of times that you have heard a word, how many times did you take that word and actually did something with it. You actually moved. In other words, you actually put it into shoe leather. You actually practice what you heard was preached. How many times? When we just become hearers and not doers of his word, the Bible says in this verse that we're deceiving ourselves. We, you see, the enemy wants us to think that as long as you're hearing the word, you've done your part. But that's only start, that's only Part one of the process. Part two is taking what you heard and doing something with it. And for, in other words, the word that a lot of us don't like, that four-letter word, it comes, it's talking about we have to obey. 23 says, if anyone, hear this, is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man who looks intently at his, at his natural face in a mirror. For he looks at himself and goes away and at once forget what he was like. In other words, imagine it. you got a word from the Lord. That word was on time. That word knew your address. That word chastised you and, and highlighted some areas in your life that you needed to work on. And yes, you said, you know what, pastor, preacher, whoever, you know what? That word was right on time. It was right for me. Or better yet, imagine you was going, you're going through a difficult time in your life. And you heard that preacher preach a word of encouragement, what you ought to do, and, and, and you heard that word. But it turns out that when you heard that word, it sounded good for a moment. But right after you left your seat, right after you went out those double doors and you went back home, you didn't do nothing with that word. It's time out for us as the people of God to just be hearers, but to move on to part two or to step two or the second part of the process. And that becomes doers because that's when the blessings of God begins to open up and flow in our lives. I believe as I was to take a, a poll right now then I would ask who here want to be blessed. I believe everybody would raise both their hands and both their feet at the same time if they could. Everybody wants to be blessed. At least I hope everybody want to be blessed. But we got to understand that we play a part in the blessing process. We play a part in the blessing process. We're going to talk about that in a few minutes. And finally, verse 25. But the one who looks into the perfect law, the law of liberty, which is the word of God, because the word of God, when you, a lot of people think that doing the word of God is restricted, but actually, as you abide by the word of God, you live by the word of God, you'll find a level of freedom that you could never get to without the word of God. Because God, because Jesus said he come to set the captives free. He's anointed. He came to set us free. He set us free first from the, the sin debt. And he's trying, and, and the Lord wants us to be in freedom. And listen to this part right here. And perseveres. You see, we have to persevere. We have to, we have to, we have to take it. We got to take a licking and keep on ticking. Sometimes the word of God is going to encourage us. Some kind of word of God is going to, going to get right in that area that we don't want to deal with. 
So we have to persevere. We have to obey and follow and abide in that word that we'll be able to, to get to the next level. Being a no hearer who forgets, but a doer who acts, he will be blessed in his doing. I don't know about you, but I want the God, I want God to bless me in my going out and my coming in. I want in everything I lay my hands to do, that God to bless it. But, it all, but if I really want to get the blessings of God, it comes with obedience. Look at it from this standpoint right here. For those who may have had children or those who were children, I learned a long time ago that if I wanted to get something from my parents, I had, as a child, got to do what they say do. And as I grew up and became a father, I, learned, I, I tried to instill in my children the importance of following instructions. And I'm here to tell you that we all understand, if we, for those who are parents, that if your children are doing what they're supposed to do and being obedient, doing what you're asking them to do, and if they ask something of you within reason, you find yourself compelled to do it. Now, how much more, if we at this earthly level, we think like this, how much more we think our father thinks when we doing what we God calls to do and we being obedient, we practicing what we say we're going to do and we, we doing what God tells us to do. And we find ourselves in a position where God, when we go to when we get on our knee and we ask God, we send up our prayer request and we've been doing fully doing what God calls to do, then we make it easier for God to release the blessings. To open up the windows of heaven and release that blessing to us. Everybody want to be blessed, but we got to understand as, I'm, as I keep echoing through this message that we have a part to play in the blessing. The great thing about it, nobody can block your blessing. The person who you feel don't like you can't block your blessing. Let me tell you something else. The devil in hell can't block your blessing. But guess who can block your blessing? You. It all rises and set on you amen now i said all of that to get to this get to my four points and then i'm gonna let you go this morning i want to tell you or, or, or give you four points on why it's important to be doers of the word of god here's point number one god is requesting or should i say it like this obedience puts you in position position you see blessing is all about receiving the blessing is all about being in position saints we have to get in position in order for God to bless us very few of us got jobs where if you never work that you're going to get paid in other words you have to be in it to win it it's all about being in position God is requesting your, your cooperation. In other words, we have to cooperate with God. We know that God, God is all powerful. He's, he's omniscient. He got everything. He controls everything. But the point is, God does not force us to be obedient even to his word. He wants us. He loves it when we are obedient to his word. He requests that of us, but he doesn't make us do it. But it's to our benefit to do it. Now, let me give you an Old Testament scripture, Deuteronomy 28. That's one of my favorite chapters in the Old Testament, Deuteronomy 28 and verses 1 through 14. In fact, do yourself a favor and read the whole chapter upon your devotional time. Read Deuteronomy chapter 28. You'll see something very fantastic. And for those who will say, well, pastor, that's the Old Testament. I want you to know that the word of God is still, or the old or new, is still applicable today. I want you to hear. I'm kind of Cherry pick this verse right here because those verses 1 through 14 are long and in depth, but it's worth us hearing. This is where Moses was speaking to the children of Israel, but it's applied to us. So I'm going to say, let's begin with verse 1. If you faithfully, listen to that, faithfully obey the voice of the Lord your God, being careful, listen to this, being careful to do all his commandments. That I command you today. The Lord God will set you high above the nations of the earth. Now, how many of y'all want the Lord to set you on high? In Bible study this past week, I was telling the, the saints when we were studying Psalms 91, when it talks about God will set, up, when we set our love upon him, that he will set, set us on high. 
The key significant of when God set you up on high that nobody can touch you. Not the devil can touch you. Not your haters can touch you. I don't know about you, but I want the Lord to set me up on high. I pray that you want the Lord to set you up on high. He said he'll set you on high. And listen to the benefit of obeying, becoming a doer of his word. Verse 2 start, kicks it off. It says, and all these blessings shall come upon you. And listen to this. I like this part. And overtake you. I love it when God overtakes us in blessing. It's a scripture in the Bible that tells us that before we yet call, God would answer. He will overtake you. If, here you go, here's the condition, y'all. You got to understand God's word is principle, is condition, and principle. In other words, if we do our part, then God do his part. If you obey the voice of the Lord your God, here it is, verse 3. Blessed shall you be in the city. Blessed shall you be in the field. Blessed shall be the fruit of your womb. That's your children. And the fruit of your ground. And the fruit of your cattle. And the increase of your herd. And the young of your flock. In other words, many of us probably are not farmers, but we're talking about our resources. Amen. Blessed shall be your basket and your kneeling, kneading, kneeling board. In other words, your food. You have to worry about that. God will always make sure that you have something to eat. Blessed shall you, you be when you come in, and blessed shall you be when you come out. In other words, you hear me say at the end, of, you have heard me say at the end, blessed in the city, blessed in the field, blessed when I come, blessed God. This is what I'm talking about. I'm actually quoting this particular scripture. And if you keep on going in verse 8, it says, the Lord will command the blessing. Imagine this. It's one thing to pray for it. But when God himself say, blessings, go over there and go to sister such and such house. And you know that blessing going to go. Or go over there to the to pastor Joyner's house. I love it when God do that. When you can get to a place in God where you just being the child of God and doing what you're supposed to do, that, that God will command the blessing to go. I like verse 9. He said, the Lord will establish you. Then you go to verse, verse 11. says, the Lord will make you abound in prosperity. Verse 12 said, the Lord will open you. To you, his good treasure. The Lord, I love verse 13. The Lord will make you the head and not the tail. Above only <laughs> and not beneath. And then verse 14 says it. If you do not turn aside from any of the words. In other words, if we do what God calls to do, then guess what? We are putting ourselves in position for God to bless us. And God want to bless. I want you to understand if anybody told you God don't want you blessed, you are wrong. But like I said in the beginning of this message, no matter how powerful the word you get, no matter how awesome the word is delivered, the word effectiveness in your life is determined on you. Well, you just simply stay at stage one, which is hearing. We got to get, listen, you need to ask yourself, am, I'm as, am, how long have I been stuck at stage one? I don't know about you. I believe God wants us to go to stage two, which is doing where your hearing prompts you to the point of doing because you trust God, which is a demonstration of your faith. Let me give you point two. Point two says it, it says this. Obedience demonstrates your love. OK, being doers of God's word, demonstrate your love. Let me let me say it like this from a practical standpoint. Growing up, I did not always like what my parents told me to do. Sometimes I thought they was unreasonable. And it got to the point that even though elder I got, I thought I knew more than what they knew. I thought that they was out of touch. But I still submitted myself to my parents because I love them. Listen, hear what the word of God says in John 14, verses 21 through 24. Who, now this is Jesus in your King James Version or your New King James Version. This is, your, your word will be highlighted in red. That means this is Jesus speaking. Whoever has my commandments and keep them. Now the word keep doesn't mean for you to put it somewhere and secure it and just hold it in a place. But keep means obey. So you can interchange keep to obey. He it is who loves me. See, a lot of times we believe that because I praise God and I say all the right words, Lord, I love you. I bless you. I thank you. Lord, I honor you. We think we're loving on God. 
But here's the thing. You could be saying the right things, but if you're not obeying him, God, God, God said, you just, you just sounding brass and tingling cymbal. Ain't nothing to you. But when we start, when, when our love for God causes us, because I'm going to be honest with you, sometimes doing the word, being obedient to the word of God is uncomfortable. A lot of times it goes against our fleshly nature. Think about it. Love your enemies. Come on. Many of us don't want to love our enemies. If the Bible said, hate our enemies, we'd be like, yes, Lord, we can do that. But it takes, it takes love for God to do what he said when he said, love your enemies. Pray for those who despitefully misuse you, mistreat you. It takes a lot. It takes so much. And he, saying, he says it like this right here. Back to that, 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 that verse 22. Judas, not Iscariot, said to him, Lord, how is it that you will manifest yourself to us and not to the world? And Jesus answered him, if anyone loves me, he will keep my word. Listen to that. He will keep, she will keep they will, okay, let me say it like this. He or she will obey my word and my father will love him and, or her and will come to him or her and make our home with him. Listen to this right here. When we become doers of God's word, God, we are making room. Remember I spoke, I referenced to that. Is there any room in the end? We are making room in our lives, in our home for God. And I don't know about you, there's no greater person to have in your house than the Lord. Because anything that was, that's not right, because when God steps in the place, when his presence is in the place, when you let the presence of God have his, have his way in your life, in your home, then things that are not right got to get in line. Why? Because the king is here. When the king gets in your house, he, guess what? Things that was out of order got to get in order. Don't you remember in the scripture where Jesus went in an area where things was out of order because there were some demons? And the demon said, Lord, did you come to, to persecute me, thy son of David? Because they know when Jesus steps in the place, when he gets in your, get in your life, things that was out of order got to get in line. Who will want the Lord in your house? You better learn to make room for him in your inn. And Jesus said in 23, if anyone loves me, he will keep my word. My father will love him and we will come to him and make our home with him. And finally, verse 24 said, whoever does not love me, Watch this. Watch this. I'm going to say that I'm going to take my time on this point. Whoever does not love Jesus, the Lord, God, does not keep my words. That's heavy right there. That's heavy. That's heavy. I need you to let that sink in this morning. When we are just hearers only, we are not loving God. Let that sit in for a moment. When we don't hear, we, we just become here. When we just become just stage one and we get stuck at stage one. We don't love God. And the word that you hear is not mine, but the Father who sent me. In other words, everything we hear, this is coming from God the Father. He expects us to, to follow. He expects us to follow. Point number three. Listen, I said this many times. Those are members of uh, Evergreen know I said this many times. The word of God is a mirror. Listen, the word of God will show you you. Have you ever heard or uh, uh, been in a, a worship service and the preacher was preaching and, and, you, and, you, and you felt like that preacher was, must have been in your house last night? It's not that that preacher knew what was going on. What it was is the spirit of God was moving through that preacher to show you and to expose some things that wasn't right. Or some things you need to be made aware of. In other words, the word of God will, will, will reflect some things that are out of order. It will reflect you. Listen what it says in Hebrews chapter, I'm sorry. Listen what it says in 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 16. All scripture is inspired by God. And is useful, watch this, to teach us what is true. And to make us realize what is wrong in our lives. I told you that last week. 
about the chastisement. It corrects us. Remember that mirror? The purpose of a mirror? What does a mirror do? When, when, when James, later on, we just got to reading that, it, that when you become hearers and not doers, it's like a man looking in the mirror. He looks in the mirror, and the purpose of most, most of the time when we look in the mirror is for us to look and see what's out of order so we can get things in line. You hear the word of God, you hear, you know the word of God is true, but you refuse to change. The word of God is a mirror. It corrects us when we are wrong and teaches us to do what is right. It shows us the word of God. I'm sorry, I went to, I went to 2 Timothy chapter, chapter 3, verse 16. I meant to go to Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. And it reads, for the word of God is alive and powerful. It's sharper than the sharpest two-edged sword cut between the soul and the spirit. Between joint and marrow. Watch this. It exposes our innermost thoughts and desires. The word of God is a mirror. And finally, verse 4, I read it already about the word of God. So I'm going to give you the point. It says the word of God builds our Christian character. The purpose of the word for us to understand about the word of God, as I read just a moment ago, about all scriptures inspired by God to teach us what is right, what is wrong, and to show us how to do right. It's, it builds our character because I remember I shared with you last week that none of us naturally come out the womb doing, being uh, displaying the characteristics of being a child of God. We have to, work, like I said last week, we have to work on our integrity. And what gives us integrity is our character. Our, our, our integrity is built upon our character. And we have to understand that we have to submit ourselves to the word of God. This is why we do the word of God, because it will build us and make us to become better children of God. And when we become better children of God, then guess what? We can, we can cause effect and have an impact to the world and to the area, to wherever God allowed us. Because we have to get in our mind that wherever you stepped your foot is your, foot, your uh, pulpit. Although I'm in this, 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 this church building, this building is not the church. I am the church. You are the church. And wherever you stand, guess what? Wherever you are, you are in your pulpit. You see, I understand that we have great reverence for the pulpit because that's the place where the word of God is delivered from. But I want you to understand that the word of God is actually delivered from you. Wherever you go is your pulpit. And we got to become not just hearers. We got to move out of stage one. So I'm encouraging us today. Let's move out of simply stage one and go to stage two. Let me break it down. My final closing point right here over in Romans chapter 10. Many of us had to accept Christ as our Lord and Savior. Which means we heard the word. We knew that the word convicted us. And we acted on it. We confessed with our mouth and believed in our heart that God raised Jesus from the dead. The Bible, the Bible said we are saved. So well, we heard it and we moved to step two. We moved to step two in order to get our salvation. So guess what? God wants to do more in our life than just, just dictate where we spend eternity. Now, going to heaven and living with him forever is good enough. Don't get me wrong. That's awesome enough. But I want you to know, my brothers and sisters, people of God, saints of God, children of God, that God has greater things in store for us. But, it's, but you see, it's, it's wrapped up and tied up in our, our moving from stage one, which is hearers, to stage two. We got to move to stage two, y'all. God is calling us to stage two in order for stage, when we move to stage two, then some things can change. We have to examine ourselves. How do we view the word of God? Do we consider it to be optional? How do we, do we have the right respect for the word of God? Do we get the word of God preeminence or first place in our life that if, if the word of God comes down our street and it, and it catches us in, in an area, even if we don't like it, and it chastises us, are we willing to hear that word and do something about it? It's time for us to do something about it. Today, maybe there's someone who heard this word, 
Someone who, who said within themselves, you know, I've been stuck at stage one for a while. My master first lady will give us uh, some praying music, amen. It's time for us to move on from being just stage one to stage two. We gotta remember, when we move on to stage two, we position ourselves to be blessed. It's up to us. It always, the ball always been in your court. For the longest we've been thinking, well, I'm just waiting on the Lord. Whenever the Lord's, if it's the Lord's will, well, it is his will for you to be blessed. The Bible tells us over in 1 John that he desired for us to prosper and be in good health even as our soul prosper. It's up to us. God is requesting your cooperation right now. Young lady, young man, older man, older lady, Young lady, God want to work it out on your behalf, but he needs your cooperation. Young man, you want to be established. You want to go on and do great things. You got hopes and dreams, but it starts off with you cooperating with the Lord. Hearing the word and moving on to stage two, which is doing the word. The Bible is filled, chock full of blessings that God wanted, that he promised to give his people. But the reason why many of us is we will be honest with ourselves. We have been, we have fallen trapped by the enemy that all we have to do is hear it. Because after all, faith coming by hearing. But in that same scripture, when we confess our sins, Believe in our heart. That's the doing part. That's the doing part. That's the stage two part. We can be saved. So if we got anyone here that's, that's listening to me this morning, today is a good day to, to be saved. It's an awesome day to be saved. The Bible's clear. All have sinned, have come short of the glory of God. This preacher has sinned. The person sitting next to you has sinned. The person looking at you in that mirror every day, guess what? He or she has sinned. All of us have sinned. But what I love about our Father is that He did not wait on this time. God did not wait till we do our part for Him to send His Son Jesus to die for us. Jesus said, the Bible said, while we were yet sinners, God, I mean, Jesus died for us. So Jesus done his part. Now it's time for us to do our part. If you don't know Jesus Christ and the pardon your sin, and you feel something on the inside of you that's saying, today is your day. You, you, need, you, you need to accept him as Lord and Savior. That's the Holy Spirit. Don't harden your heart. That's the Holy Spirit. What do you have to do? Um, um, let me pray this prayer with you. Just repeat after me. Dear Lord, I recognize that you have been keeping me all my life. Dear Lord, I recognize that should I die today, I will not live forever with you. I realize that I'm a sinner. I ask, Lord, that Jesus, that you will come into my life. I believe that God raised you from the dead, and I believe you died just for me. I receive you, dear Lord, as my Lord and Savior. I renounce my allegiance to the devil and my sinful ways in Jesus' name. And if you prayed that prayer, you say, you say, you just as saved as I am. You say, but now in stage two time to hear the word and become a doer so let me pray for all my brothers and sisters in Christ 
Because every now and then we, if we be honest with ourselves, we can be, we hear the word of God, but we can be kind of stubborn. So I want to pray for you, sir. I want to pray for you, ma'am. I want to pray for you, young man. I want to pray for you, young lady. Let us close our eyes and join our hearts in prayer. Dear God, we love you, Lord. We ask, Lord, that you will forgive us for all the many times that we have heard the word of God. We knew it to be true, but for some reason we refuse to do it. We heard the word that we need, that you are requesting our cooperation in order to bless us. So Lord, forgive us for the numerous of times that we did not become, we just were simply stuck, we stayed stuck at stage one, just hearing it. But now Lord, with the power of the Holy Spirit, we ask that you will empower us and strengthen us and encourage us to move to stage two. And Lord, I pray that you will bless my brothers, my sisters, in the Lord, bless your people, Father God, that because I know how the enemy works. The enemy will try to get them to focus on things. Things haven't moved yet. But I know, Father God, that you are moving and have moved on our behalf. So, Father God, I pray that you will encourage my brothers and sisters in the Lord today. I pray for their strength. I pray, Lord, that you will guide them. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And amen. On the way of announcements, I just want to encourage us to remember that although our Lord is a healer, he's a deliverer, he's our savior, don't use that as an excuse not to obey the instruction that we are to maintain social distancing that we ought to wash our hands frequently and 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 being careful and not foolish with our decision making I, trust me i am just like you i am ready for this disease and for god to move the disease and eradicate it but i believe that we all do not tempt the lord our god so i'm, I'm encouraging us today to maintain and be vigilant and be sober. Do what we're supposed to do. Let's practice social distancing. I don't care if you see somebody else not wearing a mask, but you do your part. Continue to pray for those who are in leadership in our governments. Continue to pray for those who are sick, because that's what we at the church are supposed to do. I also want to remind us that next week, if the Lord said the same, we will celebrate communion. I'm gonna ask that you would prepare yourselves. Use this time to prepare yourself. And if you, if you, whatever you use, whether it's bread or whether it's a cracker, whether it's juice or water, we're gonna pray over it, consecrate it. And in the spirit, we're gonna take communion together. So next Sunday, be mindful, prepare yourselves for communion. And it is our custom here at Evergreen to wish everyone a happy birthday and wedding anniversary at the beginning of the month. So if you, sir, if you, ma'am, are celebrating a birthday or wedding anniversary during the month of July, I speak God's blessings upon you. Amen. Until next time. Let us look unto the Lord and be dismissed. Now may the grace of God, the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit, may it rest, rule, and abide with us hence now and forevermore. Dear Lord, remind us, I pray that this word finds a home in the hearts of your people, that we move from being stage one, which is hearers, to stage two, which is doers. Bless my brothers and sisters. And I declare that you are blessed in the city, blessed in the field, blessed when you come, blessed when you go, and that no weapon formed against you shall be able to prosper. And every tongue that rises up against you in judgment, you shall condemn. Until the next time, I look forward to seeing you. Amen. God bless you. 
go in peace.